Welcome, Kevin Dennis with Werner Fall Protection Technical Services. Today's topic is Mobile Elevated Work Platforms, MEWPs, or MUPs, but we're going to call them lifts because, frankly, saying MUPs is awkward. So, for fall protection purposes, lifts can be put into one of two categories, those that bounce and those that don't. I know there are several different differentiators, but bouncing is the main issue if additional fall protection is needed or not. Lifts that bounce go by many names. Boom lifts, extensible booms, articulating lifts, telescopic, vehicle mounted elevating and rotating work platforms, and a host of brand nicknames. But they can be identified by the basket being extended beyond the base and being able to bounce and eject operators over the guardrails. Lifts that don't bounce, vertical only lifts, the basket cannot be extended past the base since it can only go up and down. So a scissor lifts, elevating platforms and personnel lifts are in this category since they only go up and down and there is no springboard effect. I need to start by reviewing the regulation that deal with fall protection and lifts because it varies, but it's all based around the bouncing problem. Guardrails are ineffective when a lift bounces. For this reason, all jurisdictions require additional harness setups in any lift that can bounce to guard against ejection. OSHA 1910, 1926, 1915, United States Army Corps of Engineers, EM 385, and all state OSHA programs require a harness system and boom lifts. For vertical only lifts, opinions vary. OSHA and state programs do not require a harness setup and scissor lifts, where the United States Army Corps of Engineers under EM385 does. Washington, Oregon, and California, states that have unique fall protection requirements, do not require fall protection and scissor lifts, but there are some exceptions. If the guardrails are removed or lowered, or if a person is transferring in and out of the lift, or if the lift manufacturers require it, then it's a requirement. So refer to your company policy when dealing with vertical only lifts and ask your supervisor or safety department to make sure you're following local requirements. So moving on to the equipment, I'll review the options that are available and start with the easiest part, the harness. Most any compliant harness will work in a lift with hundreds of options available. It's not the lift that determines the specific harness, but usually other work needs like arc flash, welding, evacuation, or needs of the work where a tool belt, hip D-rings, or other harness feature is needed. But most any harness can be specified for use in a lift. That's the easy part. Now let's talk about the hard part, the connector. I'll go through this and you can decide if you're team lanyard or team SRL. First, both systems, lanyards and SRLs, are fall arrest systems. They are not restraint. Restraint systems prevent travel beyond the edge of a fall hazard, so there's no fall. The edge of the fall hazard in a lift is the top of the guardrails. So to be restrained, the rigging must prevent the user from being able to travel past or be ejected over the edge of the guardrail, which isn't possible when we connect a system to the back harness D-ring or give enough length to allow the work to be done. So if a person can go over the guardrail, we will be dealing with some level of arresting force. And at the end of it all, a person will be suspended by the harness, so it's a fall arrest system. To be restrained, the connector has to be shorter than the distance from the lift anchor to the top of the guardrail, which usually is measured in inches, and it isn't possible in the majority of lifts. So it's good that we keep equipment short, restrict lengths, etc., etc. But if the equipment is long enough, lanyard or SRL, where a person can go over the top, even as unlikely as that might be, it's still a fall arrest system because we're dealing with energy and the occupant being suspended after the fall event. So back to team lanyard and team SRL. Both systems are acceptable for use in lifts and they, they both have pros and cons. Team lanyard supporters like that lanyards are very robust economical, they have very predictable performance, and they control forces effectively and come in a variety of options. Depending on the lift anchor location, if there was an ejection, free fall distances with lanyards vary from a couple of feet and can be as high as 12 feet if the lanyard is anchored at the top rail and the person is ejected the full length. Werner lanyards equipped with six foot FF energy absorbers like the C311-104 are popular, or the adjustable 311-102, 
that can be shortened down according to the worker height and lift size. If free falls greater than six feet can occur, models like the 311-120 with 12 foot FF rated energy absorbers are available, also in steel cable, and models 361-120 LE that have been subjected to the leading edge tests. Shortcomings for team lanyard is the loop of slack that's always around your knees. It's bothersome when working. Unlike SRLs, lanyards will only stop a fall at the end. So if someone goes over the guardrail, they're always going to go to the full length of the lanyard. So moving over to Team SRL, people that cheer for this team like self-retracting lifelines for use in lifts because of their user friendliness and locking speed. Due to the retractable nature of SRLs, you don't have that loose line hanging around your legs and knees like lanyards, so they're a little more user friendly. In the event of an ejection, depending on how the ejection occurs, there's also the chance the SRL might lock before the occupant is ejected and they stay inside the basket. The downside of SRLs is they're not as economical as lanyards, and due to the locking and unlocking nature of the SRL, the unit may lock and unlock a couple of times as the boom bounces. Within Team SRL, there's a lot of discussion as to which type of SRL is required or best suited for use in lifts. The anchor point in the vast majority of lifts is below the D-ring at the mid-rail level inside of a lift. This lower anchor location and the top of the guardrail interrupting the SRL line make Class 2 SRLs the best choice. Even though the guardrail isn't sharp at all, any interruption of the line between the anchor and the person will affect the forces on the person. All Class 2 SRLs have an energy absorber on the person on the harness end that will control forces on the occupant. So given the line contact, the potential increase in fall distances, the anchorage below the D-ring, and the scenario of the line going into a, a door hinge, control panel guards, or whatever else it's available to contact, class two SRLs have a higher tolerance for free fall distances and are preferred when stuff comes in contact with the line. You will find opinions vary on this topic, but when asked what SRLs are best suited for increased fall distance and line contact, it's a class two SRL. So the R430006 LE, both single and twin leg options are popular players for team SRL with a small snap hook on the anchorage connection and six feet worth of working length. Alternatively, the 410008 LE in cable is another popular model. For larger platforms, using the 430006LE-TV tieback SRL provides 9 feet of working length and can be anchored directly to the lift in the same manner as a regular snap hook. It must be noted with SRLs, if you are governed by EM385 and the United States Army Corps of Engineers, they prohibit the use of team SRL in boom lifts and scissor lifts. So clearly they're team lanyard. So whether you're team lanyard or team SRL, there are several options for both. When a lift bounces, it's very difficult to argue that, that one's going to outperform the other. SRLs will lock and unlock, or the person might be at full extension of the SRL when they're ejected. Lanyards are always at your knees, and they will never lock early. I'll finish up by telling you, if you watch enough lift ejection videos and tests, you will quickly realize that neither Team Lanyard or Team SRL eliminate the violence of an ejection, and both are designed and suitable to protect the occupant from the ground below. So thanks for listening. Reach out to your local Werner representative if you have any questions.